What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Trank. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a very simple but highly accurate crosscut sled. I think that a lot of people kind of overcomplicate these on YouTube, but there's really a couple key things you need to consider and get right, and you'll end up with a very useful jig that you'll use more than anything else on your table saw. So stick with me, I'm going to show you what we do. Okay, so first things first, let's just talk about a couple of the key things that you need to absolutely get right in order to get an accurate crosscut sled. The first thing that we need to ensure is that there's absolutely no side to side play in the sled. So you can see the sled goes front to back really smoothly with uh, no major restrictions. But if I take the corners here and wiggle them, I can't feel even a couple thousandths of movement. It's absolutely stationary except for in this one direction, that's the first key aspect. The second key aspect we need to get right is we need to ensure the blade is absolutely perfectly square with the fence. And there's a um, five cut method to do this, which I am gonna use, but I've got a kind of unique method on dialing the fence into to position that you're gonna find really useful and get rid of a lot of the frustrating aspects of making a crosscut sled. Other than that, anything you add on is just extra uh, tricks from there, but I make mine really simple, but I make sure I get those two things right. So I'm gonna show you exactly how we do it. Okay, so the first step is to start cutting down your material to the size for the sleds. Now, I'm going to be making two sleds and kind of covering the steps based on whichever one I was working on. And so I make one larger one and one smaller one, and I've just put up some reference dimensions here. Of course, it's going to kind of depend on your table saw and how big you want them, but this might help give you an idea what to do. Now, I'm using Baltic birch plywood for the base because it's very stable and flat, and then I'll be using MDF for the back fence because that one will be less important and I'll be also using Baltic birch on the front fence. So the first step is to gang up some 3 quarter inch MDF or of the Baltic birch depending on which fence you're doing in order to give you an inch and a half approximately width piece and these will be used for the fences. You just want to put on a lot of glue and make sure you clamp it down tight to get a nice strong piece. Now I have a jointer, so I use this to clean up where that glue line was and just make sure that I have a nice square face there and edge. And so just one pass over the jointer takes care of that. Next thing you're going to do is cut your fences down to the proper height. Now you're going to want to base this on whatever kind of stop block you're going to be using at the end. So use your stop block as a guide. I think mine ended up being just over two inches tall. I'm using the Jonathan Katzmolvis stop block. So you have to gauge that based on which one you're going to be using. Now on the fence that's going to be the front fence, what you want to do is apply a slight chamfer on the underside. That's going to give sawdust a place to go when you're actually making cuts so that it doesn't hinder your cut. And with that, we can go ahead and install the back fence to start work putting the sled together. I like to line out where those holes are going to go so that I can just get a nice even screw layout. Uh, but this back fence is not crucial to alignment or anything, so you can really put these wherever you want. So I put down some glue and screw this on. And here we're working with the smaller one. You do the exact same with more screws if you're on a bigger one. Now this is where things start to get uh, a little more attention to detail. So we're going to be laying out where both the pivot screw and where the adjustment screw are going to be going for dialing in the fence on the sled. So what you need to do is use a marking knife to perfectly lay out a known distance between where you're going to be drilling those holes. Uh, because when we do the five cut method later, you need to know that exact distance down to, you know, a thousandth of an inch to get accurate results. So I lay those out carefully with a marking knife. Now using the awl to actually poke where those uh, are going to go and then using a brad point bit we can go ahead and drill those holes out. One of them is just going to be a pilot hole for a regular screw. This one, the adjustment screw, what you want to do is drill out an oversized hole for a quarter 20 bolt. And so I go about a 32nd or 16th of an inch larger in diameter. And then when you countersink and put that bolt through you can see here that there's enough play in that hole to move the fence back and forth a little bit and then you can use a knob on top to tighten that down and the clever thing is that's going to give us perfect adjustability as we dial in that fence later. Now I'm using this uh, high molecular weight plastic for the miter bars and I found that this is the best material to use because you can really get it to be perfect with your saw versus using set screws or other uh, conventional ones from the store. 
So you want to cut those down so you have a tight but slightly loose fit in each miter slot. And the reason for that is once you have two of them glued down, it's going to get tighter um, just by nature. Uh, because these are just plastic, you do have to drill and countersink some holes for some screws. I like to lay these out and place them about an inch and a half or so just so that I get a nice uh, attachment point at the end. So here you can see we've got some miter bars for the smaller sled and for the larger sled. Okay, so now we can go ahead and glue those miter bars to the sled itself. Now I use uh, some washers here just to prop up the miter bars as we glue it down. You need them to be slightly above the surface of the table saw. I liked it to be a little over slightly over the surface just so that no glue squeeze out gets on the cast iron. Uh, but washers or some coins, anything works pretty well for this. And I just go ahead and use a bit of CA glue. Again, we don't need to get anything alignment wise perfect here, but I do use the fence to square it up approximately, uh, mainly just for aesthetics. It's gonna look a little more square by the eye, uh, but if you don't get it perfect, it doesn't matter. Just get that attached. Put something heavy there so that it adheres. And then once it's dried, you can take that off and uh, screw on the miter bars. So a uh, big tip here is that you do wanna continue that pilot hole into the plywood base. If you don't and just try to put the screws in, uh, chances are you're going to shift those miter bars and your alignment's going to be completely off. And I've learned this by the hard way, so make sure you do those pilot holes before putting the screws in. At this point we can do a few things just to make the fit easier on the table saw. I like to chamfer the bottom edges of the miter bar just using a black plane. That'll just help you find those gaps and set the saw, uh, sled down easier. And then you can go ahead and also just apply some paste wax to the bottom. That's just going to let it slide a little bit easier. And if you don't have paste wax in your shop, you should get some because it can be used for just so many different things. And I use it all the time. So now is the very important step of making sure that there's absolutely zero play in your sled. So what you want to do is check two corners. Uh, you can see how you do that there. Check for any movement. If there's any play at all, what you can do is just come in with the screwdriver and start to tighten down those screws that attach the miter bar. Because this plastic will slightly deform, it'll actually, as you tighten them down, slightly expand the width of those miter bars. And you just continue this process until you have a fit that has absolutely zero side to side play. And this allows you to get a perfectly accurate uh, sliding motion. So just continue that process. It'll take a few tries, but you'll eventually get it. Once you have that, we can go ahead and raise the saw and cut it through the sled. Now what you want to do is stop about a half an inch before your front fence. Uh, that's because we want the kerf in the fence to be as close to perfect as we can. And at this point, we haven't dialed in that fence at all. So to get our first adjustment on the fence, go ahead and get an accurate machine square and align this up um, as close as you can. It doesn't need to be perfect. We'll be using the five cut method, but loosen that bolt and tighten it down once you have it mostly square. Now I'm not going to go over the exact details of the five cut method in this video, but I will link to this article where you can print this out and it goes over exactly how to do it so that if you have any questions, you have a reference right there in front of you. But essentially what you're going to be doing is making four cuts on a piece that fits in your sled. This is going to basically increase the uh, detection of any error in the fence and allow you to adjust for that appropriately. Now the major benefit to using this oversized uh, hole and bolt is that when you come to make the adjustment here, instead of unscrewing a pivot screw or adjustment screw and then re-drilling it once you have made your slight adjustments, all that hassle is gone and all you have to do is loosen your fence, do your adjustment with your feeler gauges and then re-tighten that knob down. And at this point you haven't made any more holes or dealt with any of that frustration and you can continue the five cut method until you have it dialed in perfect. You can see here after four cuts, I've got both of the opposite ends there within literally a thousandth of an inch. So it's pretty incredible how accurate you can get it. And I think this is the best method for dialing it in. Once you've got that perfect, you can go ahead and clamp the fence in place while you add some screws in. Uh, you just wanna clamp it just so that again, it doesn't move on you at all while you're adding those screws. Finally, the last step, we can add a dado in for the T-slot, um, T-track. And so on the smaller sled, this fit on the router table, so I just take a few passes on the fence to do that. On the larger one, I had to use a little edge guide on my router and just take a few passes to cut this slot out.
Now I really do recommend using T-Track uh, because having a stop lock allows you to make repeatable cuts and dial in fits and it's just really beneficial to have. I just use this Rockler T-Track here. It's aluminum so you can cut it down with your tools to the right size and then just drill and screw it in. Very last step is to add a little bit of a relief block on the back of the fence. This just allows the blade to kind of get buried into a sacrificial piece here. It just is kind of a safety thing you can put in and I like to add it to my sleds. I prop it up on a piece of paper there so that it's not dragging on the table just to reduce the friction with the table. And with that, you've got your table saw crosscut slide complete. Um, it's really simple, but you do have to pay attention to both dialing the fence and getting that miter bar fitted perfectly. Once you do, you're going to have an extremely accurate crosscut sled that's going to be more accurate than any miter gauge or uh, sled that you buy from a store. It's perfectly fitted to your table saw, and you'll find yourself using it for tons of uses. I really love to make this smaller one for any time I need to make small cuts and don't want to get that large heavy sled on the table saw. And using a stop lock in conjunction with it allows you to quickly make these repeated cuts to the exact same length. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I think that if you follow the steps I went over, you'll be well on your way to making a very accurate but simple cross cut sled. I've made tons of them and I've just kind of compiled all the tips and tricks I could think of into this video. So if you enjoyed this, be sure to leave a like guys, leave a comment below. Uh, subscribe to my channel, let's really get this channel growing and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.